Hi, my name is Mr. Staley. I'm a high school biology teacher, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to extract DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, from a strawberry. Like many students have said in the past, how do we know DNA exists if we can't see it? Well, today we're not only going to be able to see it, we're actually going to be able to touch the DNA if this experiment goes well. Okay, there's just a couple of prerequisites for this experiment. First, you need to know enough about cellular biology to understand that the DNA lo in located in each of these strawberry cells contains all the information you need to know, all the instructions to create a brand new strawberry plant that would yield strawberries just like this one. You also need to know that the DNA is, loca is located in a part of the cell called the nucleus and that the DNA is protected by a phospholipid layer or membrane, which is essentially made of fat. Okay, um, also I chose to use strawberries for this experiment because strawberries are octoploids, which means they contain eight copies of every gene instead of the usual two, which for our purposes means we're gonna have a lot of DNA uh, come out of these strawberries. Okay, now the materials you need for this experiment are Ziploc bags, strawberries, although you can use um, any other fruit too. I've seen people use kiwis, bananas, I've even seen people use their own blood to do this experiment. Uh, you need some Dawn dishwashing soap. I found that Dawn works best. You need some salt, some rubbing alcohol, you can buy at any drugstore, some water, some measuring devices, some filter paper, popsicle stick, and a clear jar or test tube, um, which I put some fil filter paper in already. And I have a little funnel that's going to help speed up the experiment a little bit. Okay, the first thing I need to do is I need to take out my Ziploc bag, and I'm going to add to it a couple of strawberries. I'm going to pinch off the green part. of both of them, just like so. These are really mushy strawberries, which is good. The mushier, the better. Then, I'm going to wipe off my hands as much as I can. Wish I brought a towel. Um, I'm going to try to remove all the air as much as I can from here because I do not want this bag popping. I'm going to zip it up, and now the fun part. I'm going to pound and squeeze all the strawberry guts out of these strawberries. Now, while I'm doing this, let me just give you a couple facts about DNA to entertain you while I'm squeezing out all these guts. Uh, did you know that the average strawberry cell contains about nine feet of DNA? Did you know that the, the average meal you eat, there's about, you consume about 55 million cells? And if you put these two things together and you do the math, that means that in an average meal, we eat about 93,205 miles of DNA. Okay, um, Alex, will you continue smushing these? Um, while Alex is continuing smushing up the strawberries, I'm going to mix what I call a lysis solution. And lysis simply means to break open. So I'm going to take my measuring cup. And what I'm going to do is create a solution that's going to help break open the membranes that protect the DNA so we can get to it. So I'm going to put in about a half a cup of water. There we go. And I'm going to add to that a teaspoon of soap. I found that Dawn dishwashing soap tends to work pretty well after some trial and error. One, two just like that. And I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of salt to help match the osmolarity of the strawberry guts that Alex is still smashing up over there. And let's stir it all together. Maybe add just a pinch more salt. Okay. All right. Alex, can you give me this? Now, remember that the DNA is enclosed in a nuclear membrane. 
Uh, the DNA of these strawberries is also coiled around a protein called a histine. So in order to get to the DNA, we need to break down these membrane walls and we need to destroy these proteins or remove these proteins that the DNA is coiled around. And this lysis solution is what we need, this break open solution. So I'm going to carefully pour it into the bag. Let me make a little bigger hole here. And once again, I'm going to try to remove all the air so we don't have an accident with the bag. And I'm going to start smushing it together some more. Trying to mix it all together. And what's going on here is the soap um, that we put into the lysis solution is getting between the water and the fats that surround the membrane and it's trapping the oils in bubbles called mesels. And then the salt is coming in and helping to punch holes through the membrane to help us get to the DNA. And I'm just gonna give it some, a couple good squeezes still. Okay, we still can't see the DNA in here. And so what do we need to do to get to the DNA is we need to use our I'm going to use a test tube for this experiment with some filter paper and um, a funnel. It's the first time I've tried a funnel for this, so I'm hoping it makes this, it makes the juice filter through a little faster. And I'm just going to slowly pour the combination strawberry soup and lysis solution into here. It's filled a little bit and try to allow it to filter through as much as we can. We're trying to get um, as much of this juice as we can. So let's see what I can do here. Okay, Alex, can you hold this over your desk real quick? And I'm gonna just try to add some more lysis solution directly to the filter paper. Some more of the lysis solution slash strawberry juice. Okay. And here we can see we're getting more of a, a soup forming. Let's see if I can add just a little bit more and get just get that test tube filled up as much as we can. Okay, so while the test tube is filling up, what we're going to want to do now is use the alcohol. The alcohol, which you can buy at any drugstore, is going to help us form a precipitant. Now, I'm not talking about precipitation where it's raining DNA from the sky or it's snowing DNA. I'm talking about a precipitant, which in chemistry we use to refer to the formation of a solid in a solution that has undergone a chemical reaction. So I'm going to remove the filter paper and the precipitant sh should be DNA, the solid that should form. And that's because DNA does not like alcohol and it's all going to clump together. So you want to be very careful. You want to make sure this DNA is, I mean this uh, alcohol is very cold. We just took it out of the freezer before we started this experiment and you want to carefully without mixing it, pour in an equal amount of alcohol into here. So now you have two layers, a layer of a strawberry lysis solution and a layer of alcohol. And what should start happening in a minute uh, is you should see little cobwebs or little stringy uh, gauze-like substances starting to form and that's the DNA. So we'll keep, a, we'll keep a look on that. And as soon as I see enough DNA forming, I'm going to take this popsicle stick and I'm going to wrap it around and you can see it forming on the bottom here already. Um, I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, but you can see a layer of it forming right here. 
Um, I'm going to try to take the popsicle stick and we've cut little grooves into it and scoop up some of it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but either way, you can definitely see the DNA. But I said we're going to touch it and I'm going to do my best to get us there. So uh, once again, I can see a big, you can see the big gauze-like struct forming here. I'm going to stick the stick in. I'm going to try to twirl it around and pick up some of this gauze-like structure. And I don't think you can see it on the camera, um, but I've been able to scoop a little bit on the popsicle stick. And so, like I promised, you can not only see the DNA, if you like, you can actually touch it.